The major indices mixed this morning as investors digest weak tech outlooks. Historically, the January barometer has been used as an indicator for investors, implying that the return seen in January can be used to predict the outcome for the rest of the year. Will that be the case this year? Let's bring in Sam Stovall, who is the CFRA Research Chief Investment Strategist, to discuss more. Sam, always a pleasure to get some of your insights. So will the gem January barometer hold true? What is the, the probability that what we've seen over the course of this month can perhaps be some type of indicator for the rest of 2024? Hey, Brad, good to talk to you again. Um, yeah, actually, the January barometer, which uh, popularized by the Stock Traders Almanac, uh, is a good early warning indicator as to where stocks are gonna be get going for the uh, rest of the year. Uh, going back to World War II, if we've had a positive January in an election year, the market was up by more than 15.5% and rose in price every single time. Obviously, that's not a guarantee that that'll happen this year, but it's an encouraging statistic. In addition, it basically says that you let your winners ride, meaning the three best performing sectors in January tend to outperform the market in the entire year when all is said and done. Well, Sam, what are these results here, at least the reaction that we're getting from Microsoft and Alphabet on the heels of their results? Could that maybe pour a little bit of cold water on at least the momentum that we have seen over the last couple of weeks? Sure, Sean. I mean, it could indicate that maybe this year is positive, but not by as much as the average for all going back to World War II. But at the same time, uh, when we read the research notes on our MarketScope Advisor platform from Angelo Zeno, who covers Microsoft and Google, essentially, uh, you'll see that we raised our target to 455 from 420, increased our earnings estimates for fiscal year 24 and 25, very impressive with Azure cloud growth. And so the thought on Microsoft is that we keep it as a strong buy recommendation, uh, maintaining our buy recommendation on Google, also raising target price, earnings estimates, et cetera. So I think investors were looking for some reason to try to lock in some profits, uh, maybe because they're worried that this advance has gone on a little too far and a little too long. So Sam, then should investors be looking at this or movements like today when we see those types of losses in some of these big tech giants, should they be using that as an opportunity to buy? I think so. I mean, we're still anticipating 15% earnings growth for the technology sector in 2024 as compared with 9.6% uh, for the S&P 500. One thing I do have to uh, warn investors about is the PE on forward 12 month earnings for the tech sector keeps bumping up against that 30 threshold, which really has been the high water mark over the last 20 years. So we'll probably need to see uh, an increase in earnings estimates for 2024 to allow this group to continue to work its way higher. Uh, don't expect PE multiple expansion. What are margins telling us about the, the strength of businesses navigating through this environment right now, Sam? Well, margins are, are holding up relatively well. And actually, uh, one of the comments made about Microsoft is that despite the elevated spend on artificial intelligence, uh, we see a clear path uh, to ongoing operating margin expansion. So for a lot of these tech stocks, uh, they are able to maintain or grow their margins. So when it goes to some of those opportunities outside of big tech, in terms of the checklist, what investors should be keeping in mind if they're trying to capitalize on some of the gains that you're expecting before year end? What's top of mind? Well, I would say, uh, again, that uh, history tells us to let your winners ride as it relates to uh, prior year performances, uh, especially after an up year. So don't give up just yet on communication services and start to consider interest in the financial sector. Uh, this is a group that's been beaten up for quite some time, but we're actually starting to see an improvement in earnings expectations, also an improvement in underlying momentum. Uh, so at this point in time, even though while we might see a digestion of gains, my expectation is it'll be uh, no more than a 10% correction in the marketplace. Short term, we could probably see a pop from the defensives as the market does digest recent gains. But I think for the full year, uh, stick with groups like tech, communication services, and financials. Is there one key word that this market should continue to monitor from the Fed and its tenor about the future and, and pacing of rate cuts? 
Well, I'll give you three. Later and fewer. Uh, later, meaning that the Fed will likely start to cut rates later than the Wall Street is anticipating right now. It won't be in March, in our opinion. It'll be in the second quarter, possibly at uh, the June FOMC meeting, and fewer, meaning that we think we'll have three 25 basis point rate cuts this year, not the five that is currently anticipated by Wall Street, mainly because the Fed does not want to make the mistakes that it made back in the 1970s. So uh, just as it took its time starting the rate tightening program, I think it'll be fairly cautious as to the timing and magnitude of the rate cuts ahead. Sam Stovall, always great to get at your perspective here, especially on a big day like today. We appreciate you taking the time. CFRA's Research Chief Investment Strategist.